start recording. So we're here with Benoit. Is that how you say your name? Yeah, Benoit. Benoit. Very cool. So you're um, you sign up for the Summer of Extreme Design Build, and I want to start with maybe a little introduction to it. Uh, a highly collaborative effort. We focus on module-based design of building civilization from scratch, from uh, learning skills, very diverse set of skill sets, where it's probably like the one line about it is, it's probably three months where you'll learn more than you ever would in an entire lifetime across a wide array of disciplines from automation, CNC, machine building, construction, and, but most importantly, a, a skill set for collaborative development. That's the biggest thing. Like, um, what we like people to get out of this is a skill set where they can collaborate, and there's a meaningful way where we can work effectively as larger teams because uh, collaboration is not not common. Uh, there is a lot of collaboration happening within boundaries, but what about if you expand those boundaries to say we are beyond any boundaries and we we collaborate for the general well-being of humanity as opposed to special interests. So that's the kind of approach we do. Uh, the summer will be uh, a full experiment in that and probably the biggest and most ambitious bunch of builds to date. Uh, so maybe we can start with, um, if you have any questions that I can answer for you about, about it right now. Uh, we're probably gonna, at the end, would be, if I have questions, time to think about it, uh, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, so the questions would be, on my side, would be, um, I think, how we can get you to prepare. Like, is that something you're, you're thinking about? Like, how do you prepare? Or do you have time to prepare at this point? Or are you busy with other work? Uh, I mean, I'm currently working, but yeah. in my spare time, I, I read books, trying to, to learn things. Uh -huh. So I'm definitely... Uh, ready to learn uh, to prepare yeah. for the for the summer camp yeah um yeah since i don't know so i, I read that you're doing some pcb etching uh mm -hmm. i'm really i try to learn a bit of chemistry on the side mm -hmm. so uh, if you can uh pinpoint what you want me uh to learn some of the main things um and tell me back uh, about your background so you're your background is, what do you do right now? Is it software? So, yeah, I'm a software engineer. Uh, I worked uh, mainly in R and uh, I had, a ma I've got a master in computer science and mm -hmm. uh, another another one in embedded computing as well as uh, RF. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so um, my current position is uh, developing software for uh, hardware reverse engineering. So looking at chips and trying to see how they work. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So this would be, and what level of hands-on skill do you have so far? Just to go through that. So uh, I already designed a few PCBs. So I had one project where uh, I made a reflow oven with a standard oven. Uh huh. Uh, and so that uh, the pro what I did, why I did this was uh, to. Uh, uh, to make a PCB card where uh, it, it was to be a, a phase um, a phase mic microphone array. Oh, what? What was that? Say it again. A, a, fa a phased mic microphone array. So put, putting a bunch of uh, microphones uh, on the on the PCBs, uh, like digital uh, digital microphones, and then. Uh, using an FPGA to read all of them and then try to figure out where the sound is coming from. Yeah. So, and like to, uh, so since uh, the package with the microphones, it was like MEMS microphone. Yeah. So I could, yeah, I, there was no way to, uh, to solder it to the board with uh, standard uh, soldering iron. I had, I had to make uh, the oven to do it. Yeah, that's good. So that's a bit of hands-on. What did that include as far as modifications on the oven? So I, I created a card uh, to to have to respect uh, a given uh, temperature profile. So mm -hmm. for for soldering, it needed so it was well basically it had to have a certain slope, then stay at uh, a given temperature for uh, uh, a few few minutes, few seconds, few tens of seconds, and then go down. Mm 
progressively. So I had a, so I, uh, the modification was putting a thermometer inside and then uh, doing like uh, put, uh, inserting a controller, mm -hmm. uh, create, writing a controller for it. To, uh -huh. to have what controller is it like Arduino or something else? Uh, it was um, I use Beagle Bones. Beagle Bones, okay. Yeah. So that's pretty power power level computing there. Uh, that's pretty advanced. So you you rigged up the Beagle Bone and made the connections to to sense temperature and regulate this oven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good deal. Um, that's that's more on the electronics front, and what we learn a lot is all the production tool chains. So the way it's uh, going to work in the summer, I think an effective way to get a lot of stuff done. Uh, wait, but before we go in there, so besides the the reflow oven, have you? Um, what is your other levels of ex uh, experience? Anything else that you have with with hands-on building? Just so I have a reference. Uh, and, uh, I'm a bit familiar with uh, uh, laser uh, laser cutting. Mm -hmm. uh, I just. Uh, I wrote some uh, them, uh, some Inks Inkscape files, some uh, SVG file programmatically to to uh, to, to draw uh, some pattern I wanted. Uh, but aside from that, not uh, not much more. Uh, mm -hmm. So manual. you know the? Did you actually use the the G Code Tools plugin? So no, uh, there was it was some Python library to gener uh -huh. uh, to to from vectors and uh, polygons. To, to generate the SVG. Uh -huh. A Python library to generate SVG from vec uh, from vectors. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Have you heard of G code tools? Uh, no, I didn't know back then. Generating SVG from vectors. That's pretty good. So that's a programmatic route to do that. What we, we have done in a Steam camp just recently was use G code tools to input, to export any kind of SVG file into a, a G code plotting file. So what you did was uh, the Python library, you took the SVG and the SVG was fed into the laser? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of laser? Uh, so honestly, a, I don't like recall. Commercial? Something commercial? Yeah, commercial. Uh -huh. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, how familiar are you with Inkscape? Come again? How familiar are you with Inkscape? Uh, aside from this, not, not okay. at all. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely want to learn a little more about Inkscape, and we're doing that within the Steam Camps, moving that forward. Um, anything else that you have done on the physical uh, front? Uh, nothing that comes to mind right now. Okay. And then, as far uh, as. Well, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, I designed another uh, PCB card uh, to, to basically uh, hack a washing machine. Uh, to do what? Uh, so it was like uh, you've got a card to, to pay for uh, for washing, uh -huh. and I I even dropped the, uh, the 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 communication between the machine and uh, the card, and to do that I had to do like a proxy for the for the card, uh, because like it was in, uh, when you insert the the, the credit card uh, inside the, you don't have access to the pins, yeah. and so I made a proxy. Uh, and then I read uh, all the, wire, the the communication with uh, uh, God. I forgot the name. Uh, well, it was uh, basically a bunch of oscilloscopes, uh, and then uh, reverse engineering uh, this uh, the the signal and uh, writing whatever amount of money I had on the card. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, did you was that on a public machine, or you had this machine at home? Uh, is it? I think this talk is recorded, so oh, it's, it, was, uh, it was on a, <laughs> on a wow, private so machine. Some hacking of, uh, <laughs> interesting hacking. So you've got you definitely got a lot of this software experience. Uh, what what yeah. other software um, software do you have? What what's what's your tool chain and software that you use on a common basis? It's Python. Uh, yeah, Python. Okay, that's good. Uh, FreeCAD is in Python, so if you ever want to make additions to to FreeCAD, we're currently developing a workbench to generate the 3D printers, basically a 3D printer design workbench within FreeCAD, so it could facilitate the redesign of the different 3D printers that we build. Um, but if you want to get involved in that, that's an active project. Uh, but since you're working full-time, you may not have so much time 
uh, at this time. But I do want you to start, like for example, getting getting involved immediately. So on the in the chat, I put a link to your log. So we start with a log. Take a click on that. <laughs> and uh, I'm already taking notes there. But we work like on wikis, Google Documents, FreeCAD, uploading stuff to the wiki, learning how part libraries work so that we can collaborate on projects. And the way, yeah, so so anytime that you that you do any, from now on, you're part of the team. And actually, I have a, I'm going to add another link to your log to the top. So what we want to have is a coordinating way to, to access everybody's log. So I'm going to put my log there. I'm going to put uh, Daniel log. So Daniel's already signed up for the summer. He's uh, signing up. And then we have you. Uh, so we're building. And in fact, um, I'm going to put in other logs like of the instructors that we have right now. So there's a bunch of people that are going to be instructors that are on board. Mm -hmm. um, so you can start looking what they're doing because that's how we can start collaborating. Um, so these are like Michelle log, there's Chris log, there's William log. William's going to be teaching in the first month. William, Chris and Michelle are probably going to be in the first month. And the rule here is that this is about, so I put some of those links if you refresh on your log, but um, idea is that I will be there for two hours in the morning going through design reviews and teaching. So basically crash courses on universal design uh, of various things like module based design. So we're going to learn how to design a shaft, a wheel, a transmission, a motor, a CNC axis, a tool head. Approach it from a very modular approach so that when we uh, we build upon these modules so that a novice can use that to make different things and the engineer experienced person can actually re-engineer the modules. So we have an ability to fit different disciplines and different skill sets all in one process. And that's the beauty of it because we're trying to architect a way where a lot of people can come together to get some amazing work done, which otherwise wouldn't be possible without modular design and open collaboration. So it's about building a Lego set of construction modules. That's our um, construction set approach and module based approach. Um, so with that said, you've got the log right now. Uh, how much time realistically would you, would you have and do you want to actually uh, study up on something? Because the first thing to do would be to look at the FreeCAD lesson. I don't know if you started looking into that. Uh, that would be the first thing to do. Um, I think uh, I'm going to put another link on the top of your log, which you want to take a look at. OSC collaboration protocol. So just um, collaboration protocol. That's a page on the wiki. And there you can you're taken to uh, if you refresh on your log. Um, OSC collaboration protocol. There's a embedded Google Doc. So we start with work logs use a team page like we'll, we'll put up a, a page like an organizing page on the wiki which we should do right now are you logged into the wiki yet can you edit the yeah. wiki okay I mean would you like an assignment go ahead the assignment is to start the wiki page for the summer X <laughs> <laughs> okay here's a template uh, do, do you know any do you know any like HTML CSS yes oh wow okay so then then take a look at this um, uh, it's called flashy X um, but yeah so basically what we want to do is have people collaborate as much as possible on all this process so let me put this link into the note on your log flashy XM. look at that little uh, if you click refresh look at flashy XM so that's a wiki page but it's got a bunch of stuff embedded in there and we want to talk about clarity on, on collaboration architecture. So what we want to have is in there is YouTube, Scrummy, logs, like work logging. Um, we want 
embedded in docks. Do you see kind of pic picture? It's like a control panel. Yeah. Uh, embedded docks, etc. Uh, but let's start creating it. Like you know, uh, we should make it such. So that's a template, and maybe like if you can. So we teach each other. The way we do it is we always teach each other. It's about collaborative power, where a lot of the stuff you can learn by diffusion, just being in the same room and other people contributing feedback that they're best on. So, for example, if you if you know HTML, CSS, um, the process we go through is we do stuff, but we also document as much as that as possible, so that naturally people can replicate it and improve upon it. So, hmm. if you are motivated to create our uh, basically control room, the, what's Flashy XM, it comes from Flash Mobs Extreme Manufacturing. Uh, that's where Flashy XM comes from, but as far as the title. Flash Mobs are where we can get lots of people working on the same thing. It's somewhat what we do, we do Extreme Manufacturing, which is uh, somewhat like Flash Mobs, where we have a lot of people for a short time. Uh, like the summer is going to be a lot of people for three months, that's not super short, that's a decent time. Um, but extreme manufacturing is what we do. Uh, a lot of time spent in design, and then we go into rapid builds. So the core of the rapid build will be between 3D printers and CNC torch table. 3D printers, we print, print plastic parts. Torch table, we go into full metal. In between there, so, so the way I'd like it to, to see the summer is whatever we design, we prototype first on a scale. So either a 3D printed model or a laser cut uh, model. For the laser cutting, we can. Uh, I think what we'll do is attach a small laser head to the D3D Universal, so you can just do cardboard, four watts cardboard. Mm -hmm. So we can do really quick modeling. So the idea is that between FreeCAD, the collaboration, the work logs, from FreeCAD we go to 3D printing, laser cutting, or any other quick prototypes that test stuff. So we'll do, uh, it's known as Second Toyota Paradox, which you should, have you ever heard of that creature? No. Look at, I'm gonna put that link in you, your log, because that's an important one. That's kind of how we operate. We, we prototype a lot, but we don't build the final thing until we're sure, we're sure it's gonna work. And, that, um, and the Second Toyota Paradox means that you do excessive prototyping until you, you know that it's all gonna work, and then when you when you actually go and build it, you've tested all the parts, and that's how Toyota works. And they they are a really successful company. Um, so you can refresh the log. Yeah. So from the free CAD, that's already prototyping. That's partial prototype. Then you get into physical prototypes like 3D prints, laser cuts and other kind of maybe simple things we can build in wood and other materials. So throughout the program, we'll be developing that whole infrastructure. Right now, we the first day, you're going to build your 3D printer in six hours, six to eight hours. It might be a long day if people, uh, depending how skilled people are, how prepared people are. Mm -hmm. But first day, we get right into it. We, we talk about, okay, what's OSC? But before that, we want to, the deal is, we get prepared as much as we can, so so start introducing each other, ourselves to each other. So, for example, uh, MJ, that's me, Daniel, Benoit. Um, Daniel is our first, um, also a person who's already signed up. So we can start coordinating, and, and we have it that we put everybody's log on top. Uh, and Daniel actually has a lot of time to prepare right now, so he's going to be probably building the printer like before he even comes here stuff like that um, but the idea is um, if we build any heavy machine like we'll we'll be working with modules frames wheel units power units mechanical joints universal rotors like five things and we can modify those a universal rotor can be multifunction it could be a wheel it could be an implement it could be a sawmill uh, so we're going to combine the tractor construction set building modules with universal axis and universal controller modules. So the universal axis, you've seen the D3D universal. Um, have you seen that on the wiki? That's what you'll build the first day. So D3D universal you build on the first day, it's got small rods, eight millimeter. 
Uh, but then we're going to scale that up. We're doing that as a construction site. We're going to have a free CAD workbench where you can design this stuff. Um, also at larger scale. So we're going to go up to 75 millimeter rods. That's huge. We're talking about monster machines uh, and tractors and things. How do you like that? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, so you asked if um, <laughs> is this uh, as good as it sounds on an on announcement, yeah. and I said, oh, it's going to be better. <laughs> it, it depends really who shows up. And I, I mean, so far between the instructors, ourselves, I mean, we've got, we've got a bit of experience on this. And, and it's really like I want to take it that we're building up, like focusing, not like, oh, we're going to build this CNC torch table. No, let's think about it. Okay, we're going to build the, the torch head with gas control as the module that's critical because we already have the universal axis. You know things like that so we'll we'll be focusing on mod on modules that are generative and all of us every one of us will be able to do that then we can uh so my role is going to be i'm going to teach about design and i'm going to do design review so i'm going to basically be the guardian of principles um yeah. and that's actually how toyota does actually when you re read that toyota page um that's how toyota does it they're kind of like really good and they it's hard to pin down their formula but but it's because they they go by principle they don't micromanage too much it's by principles design principles and overall principles and we've got plenty of those that's osc specifications and our collaborative protocols uh, so one thing you want to take a look at is osc specifications because at the end of the day uh, all of you kind of have to all of us all of you all of us to be collaborative here uh, OSC specifications, we will follow them and always refer back to them. Like if people are are unclear about, okay, is this a good design choice? We go back to two things. One is OSC vision. That's high level. And that is collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance. So transparency is there. That implies things like open source. Abundance. You can't have abundance without being efficient. So there's... Even at the high, highest level OSE vision, you have a lot of information in our vision statement. Um, and then OSE specifications list out like 60 or so points that we follow uh, as more granular design principles. So this is where we're, I'm trying to remove myself from this as much as possible because I understand that it's not about one superhero. A uh, superhero typically starts at an open source project, but for that project to evolve, you have to step back and, and teach everything. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to step back and say, okay, I'm not going to be doing design. I'm going to be guarding principles and design methods. I'm going to be informing about that. but all the people in a program will be able to do much more than I ever can simply by how much time you have and a lot of this stuff is 99% sweat 1% what what a uh, 1% inspiration 99% perspiration kind of deal it's development is long and, and hard so we do that the way we do development is consistent with that That's all. All right. Uh, so to, to go back at what I can uh, do to prepare. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I didn't say, but I have I probably 10 hours, 15 hours per week. And mm -hmm. I, I really uh, uh, work on stuff. So so you mentioned like free cat. Uh, like, is there any, uh, I don't know, to, to, to learn a bit of design yeah. beforehand? Uh, yes. Uh, let me put a link to your log. Uh, there's a page called FreeCAD 101. There's video one, two, and three. So let me put in the FreeCAD 101 link. But maybe more of. Uh, so I don't know what the FreeCAD if it's using the software or not because I already used before uh, CAD software. Yeah. Uh, but like, I don't know what to, okay, maybe I'll wait for the link to come up and then see. Yeah, so 
this is critical and, and maybe the using other software may be a handicap because FreeCAD works different. Um, lesson, there's lesson one, two, and three. So take a look at, I just did that. Um, FreeCAD 101, lesson one, two, three are kind of the critical. The three is the main workflow that we use. Three is the main workflow. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get quick access, we encourage people to install or use OSE Linux v1.0. So that there's no question about it. That that uses FreeCAD uh, 0.16, which has got a simpler interface than the more current ones. Hmm. So I recommend 016. It just makes it easier. The part tree is simpler and so forth. Um, try to use 16, that's the official, that's like our language that we'll be using is FreeCAD 16. And the thing, the term we use here, it's toolchain degeneracy. Like everyone needs to be using the same thing for this to be replicable. So I'm gonna put a link to toolchain yeah. degeneracy. Keep that in mind. Now we can have power users and doing other stuff, but the, the, the way to look at it is, it's and it's not that we use this advanced tool chain if you want to use an advanced tool chain yes you're fine but you got to be know how to use the simple one so you can communicate with everybody else because there's going to be much many more people that use the simpler one and that's how we believe that more power can be had by uh, more people being involved so that's the general theory we follow so you can do more with more more or less skilled people than a few superstars yeah. So actually, we don't have a. Um, I'm gonna link that to number redirect to degeneracy. So degeneracy refers to design decisions. Like if you specify something well enough, degeneracy means that it can pretty much take a very specific form. Degeneracy in the tool chain means that the tool chain that everybody uses reduces to a small set that everyone has and has an identical configuration. That's important for being able to work collaboratively without running into into waste of working out, oh, there's differences in a tool chain. Very important. That's how we will push the limits of what can be done in a short time. Mm -hmm. So you don't have like you don't provide a VM with all the the, the same software. Uh, the OS well, OS Linux, OS Linux ha has it at has the same that. bird. Yeah. So you can run that live or install it on your computer in a separate partition. Sure. Great. So FreeCAD would be number one. That's the most important. And then second would be. What's next after that? Look at the OSC collabor collaboration protocol and see how that looks. You can see an example if you look at the J. Uh, a good example of how we, in the last Steam camp we worked. Take a look at <clears throat> the January Steam camp page where we documented a bit um, January yeah steam cap mm -hmm. now the development template every wiki page like when, once once we have our so we kind of mentioned about the flashy XM, the control panel page for the, we, we want to have one for the entire program. This is our summer program and we kind of go to it as the watering hole for like the latest updates, main main things happening and so forth. And, um, but we probably will break down, might have links there to modules since everything is module based design. We might have one embedded graphic that has links to all the modules. So we have a visual infographic, just a visual diagram that shows we can click on it one click from the what do we call this page x or um we should actually probably call it x so it's easy to access and it's summer x 
Um, now that page is probably already taken. I probably really linked it to something else. Yeah, I, I'm gonna delink it. So yeah, let's. Our page for the the main index page is this is it. A page called X, so that when we get on a wiki, like somebody can type in as the X as the title, and it'll get us to the, our main platform for collaboration. And it, as I said, it would have links to everybody's log and all the critical assets. Now, one other aspect is the development process, which is embodied in a development template. So, simple development template. Uh, let me uh, put a link to that. That's like the critical development steps. Like you got to have concept, you got to have CAD, BOM, instructions. There's about 20 steps for any development process. But all of us should be familiar with what that looks like. So I'm gonna say simple development template. Let's see where that leads us. It should lead to the simple development template on the wiki. Because there is a wiki taxonomy. So there's on the OSC collaboration protocol, there's a link to, to wiki taxonomy. Well, let me, let me take a look at that, make sure that's in there. Because that's, it's kind of like the more advanced more advanced but that's more for managers a manager would have to know where everything is on a wiki and that's on the wiki taxonomy page uh, so I see collaboration ecology and then no it's not ecology protocol let's uh, So on a collaboration protocol, there should definitely be a link to the wiki taxonomy. Yes, that's the that's the first thing for power users to learn the wiki taxonomy. And there's a logic to it that you can find any page if you follow the taxonomy. And that's hard that you gotta be rigorous about that. But eventually, our wiki should be should follow the taxonomy. And as we get more maintainers, that becomes more of a reality. Okay. Um, with that said, let's see. Well, maybe we can cover some questions or anything else that you may have. Do you have any questions as far as how the workflow here will work? What the expectations yeah. are? So uh, I've got a tons to read about the workflow, so maybe after I've read all the pages, uh, yeah. I can come back by mail. Uh, but as for uh, uh, I sense you need a lot of involvement, and that's great because it's what I want to have. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in very motivated. Um, but aside from the all this reading, um, like more, uh, I don't know, work, this is more concerning workflows mm. uh, about things I could help with beforehand. So, since I'm more of a software engineer, if you need to have. Yeah. Uh, well, Things. yeah. take a look at, yeah, I mean, if you talk about Python, so we're developing, you'd have to kind of study up the printer a little bit, but we are developing right now, as we speak, we are developing that. So let's look at uh, G log, G log, let me put that on your log. Uh, the 3D printer workbench is going to be important. It's, it's really the universal access construction set workbench, which allows us to create any configuration of the universal access from the smallest to the largest in any number of axes, any geometry. Uh, so let's take a look at where that project is right now. So G, G log, G Roca is his name, and we are at, uh, let's see. Yeah, so he's got a universal access macro as far as what's logged on a log. Um, so as soon as you take a look at FreeCAD, FreeCAD has a Python console, and maybe you can follow his paper trail of uh, what he has done. And you can see the initial video with G. Rokas there. Uh, so Feb3, add buttons. So, so if you look at his, are you at the G log? Yeah, I'm on it. So, 
a lesson about documentation. So for example, when he does the Monday, February 3rd entry, okay, he wrote things there, but I would like to have a link to the work product right there. And so for you mm -hmm. too, whenever you write something, don't write text only, always include a link to the work product. Because now I got to scroll down and parse this to see what he's actually talking about. And th that takes me a minute or two, a bit of time. I got to scroll down far. I think the first, what he's building upon is the January 20 repository on the GitHub. Okay, so that should be prominent in, a, in his latest post so that people don't have to search it and therefore the collaboration happens within seconds as opposed to within minutes. And that all adds up when you have a lot of people working. So I'm going to add that. Uh, I guess, so G. Rokas, look at his... Uh, stuff he's got the oh I don't see it on his overview page so he's got his OSE universal access macro page so let's just link that uh, I would expect like if he has his G Roquez uh, page up there why doesn't that appear on the on his main page if you mean the GitHub page yeah uh, if, if you go to repositories in the tab repositories, oh, I guess. Oh, it's under repositories. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. There you go. So there it is. Uh, 3D printer workbench. Yeah, so he should be um, adding all this, these links yeah. up at the log. So I'm going to add that right now. Uh, So there's a there's a thing on a wiki. It's a hint, like a there's a template called hint. So I'm gonna put that hint. Um, I'm gonna put that in a hint. It's a good way to communicate if you want somebody to notice, like you want them to notice some change. So see that uh, refresh on G Rokas log on February 3rd. I just put yeah, that thing. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so yeah, cool. So that's where we're at. If you want to take a look at what he's doing, uh, definitely room for collaboration. He's developing that. He's a developer. He's putting in 10 hours per week on that. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's an important thing that we will use in the summer. So if you want to start getting familiar with that, maybe you can teach us all about it. Yeah, sure. I will. Yeah. Be great. So... What else? What else do we want to talk about? Uh, so we talked about like the the first months, I guess, machines. Yep. Uh, and then so there, there were, uh, yeah. The the final one is aquaponics. Uh, yep. Being a kind of a farm. Yep. Uh, yeah. On on this, uh, like I really have no experience uh, in agriculture and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, is this? Uh, Are you interested in learning about agriculture a little bit? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, because we're generalists. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, like, so how is it gonna work? So is it more gonna be teaching based? Because I no. Don't... So, okay. So to clarify how it's gonna work from day one to day day ninety. We're going to be continuously evolving modules. So, for example, in uh, in aquaponics, we'll be developing things like we pr we may be printing the lumber and the panels, like the actual greenhouse structure using our printer. So that's a definite evolution from day one, where we built your printer, and we built larger printers, and we we build the extruders for making plastic filament from trash. And we build those things. So everything builds upon itself. So the, the aquaponics, it's like, okay, we're still running the printers throughout. We're generating 
printing filament throughout, we're adding that, okay, now we're printing the towers and perhaps the larger containers for the water and the fish. So at the end, we will add the biological systems, but a lot of it is up on t with the mechanical stuff. So we'll have to um, be flexible of how exactly it rolls out. We will definitely continue in this process of module-based design. But no, at, at all times it's going to be, it's not going to be classroom, it's all the time we're going to be designing and prototyping different elements. Like, for example, um, right now we don't have a 3D printing file for the, the towers, right? So we'll design it in FreeCAD. Uh, and then we'll print it and we'll test it. We might do things like, oh, we can actually produce 3D printed put the reticulate, like this foam material that goes inside the towers for either worms or for growth medium for plants. Hey, let's 3D print that. So if we do that, that will be a, maybe a development project. But yeah, we'll be, depending on how many people there are and what the interests are, we'll, we'll be delving into specific directions. But we definitely want certain specific products for the extreme manufacturing build at the end of each month. So the first of the month mm. begins with somewhat like a steam camp. The end will be an extreme manufacturing event. We, we just, with all the learnings, we just build it out with 36 or 50 people. And it's going to be like very productive and, and rich learning experience for everybody. Um, and it builds upon all the stuff we've prototyped. So, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, and about, so you, do you build your own welders and what? Uh... Um, we have uh, we're gonna do the next iterations of like the cordless welders but i'm not sure we would like to if we have somebody who's an electronics guru we can definitely do the welder but right now we have eight of the 200 amp welders right now we'd like to do it it's not explicitly in the program but what is in the program is things like extruders which feed wire that wire could be applied that kind of wire feed mechanism could be applied to a MIG welder feeder. Mm -hmm. So if we take from the module based approach, say we're working on something that's power electronics, like a battery pack for the cordless drill or something, then at all times we'll be like, ah, wow, with this simple tweak, this becomes a welder. Or with this tweak, it becomes a metal 3D printer, etc. So we'll always be looking for applications. And it is possible that we would, like, definitely will develop some of the modules for the welder. Uh, it's not explicitly on a plan, if you look at the <laughs> curriculum right now, it's not explicitly that we're actually building the welder. Um, but we may, if there's a person that is good on electronics and wants to lead that part. Right now, we don't have a specific person to do that. Okay. So, in a time from now till then, I'll be looking out and inviting as many people as possible to co contribute to remote sessions. And if we find like, and that's what, another task that you can help with. If you know any people who are open source, collaborative, sharing, they can share certain knowledge on some state of art in any of this, like a welder power supply, a wire feeder, anything. I mean, there's a, I mean, basically the modules that we uh, we covered cover mechatronics, hydraulics, construction, etc. I mean, hmm. there's a lot. So, but each of those, like we break each into these simple elements and we develop on those elements. So we have a generative set, but I'll be working on getting other people involved for remote sessions at least. If you can suggest any people too, that would be great. That's part of the collaboration we can do in the process. And. Uh, one last thing is that we're trying to identify is as we go forward in this program, we're trying to identify what the best profile of a person is that we need to be reaching out to. Like it's very hard for us to pin down the target market. Like who exactly wants to learn this? It's people like you and me, right? It's people who yeah. wanna learn everything about productivity, who are generalists, who want hands-on applied skills because maybe they think that they're lacking some. And that applies to me too. I need to expand my skills to other areas like power electronics or or other things, making engines or whatever. Um, and we're all somewhat entrepreneurial. It's about 
developing real products for circular local economies. Mm -hmm. uh, is that is that something high on your radar? Uh, per pardon? Is that high on your radar? Or yeah, high yeah. Uh, I suppose a lot of us care about ecology, and so short circuits are important. Doing things uh, close by, not having, yeah. not requiring all this uh, modern economy uh, logistics. Sure. Exactly. It's uh, making just simply more efficient systems and ones that are more responsible. So it's just a natural part of what we do. Um, but getting back to the profile of the person we need uh, so that we can reach out to them. And, you know, I want to be making noise about this on the Internet and making some videos to attract more people and, and remote instructors. So I would like to ask you, there's a page called uh, Target Market on the wiki. And if you can do... And at the bottom we have, uh, in fact, let's, yeah, it's on the bottom, it says Frank has X skills and Y interests. Can you put a profile there for you? So then what? I put that as the first entry there. You can read mine under Mutton. There's a Jessica wrote hers. She's, uh, she's going to be one of the teachers. Um, she's not on an announcement yet. Uh, please put one for you, for you, and then what we can try to do is really distill this to something that, okay, this is the common ground between all these people, so that we're very clear who we need to reach out to. Would you mind doing sure. that? Yeah, I will. Okay, great. So I'm going to uh, put that link on your log there, target audience. Okay, yeah, I guess we we covered a lot of ground. Uh, before I start filling all of this, uh, I'm gonna need you to uh, to approve at one, at some point uh, the 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 account for the wiki. Ah. But yeah, no need. Uh, there's no hurry right now. Yep, I'll do that right away. Uh, I thought, did you just do that right now? I did it uh, like in the f uh, first few minutes of the session. Okay. Awesome. So, okay. Account created, so you should have it. Thanks. And that's great. So yeah, I love it. This is great. We're building momentum. This is good. Uh, please put like any time that you do on this is development. We're, we're all collaborating on development right now. So put your hours into the log yeah. and we keep we're going to explode that log because um, and I think I mentioned the, the incentive challenge on a cordless drill, right? The you mentioned no. Oh, I don't oh, believe you so did. September 2nd through the 10th, we're going to hold the, the steam camp. It's going to be big. It's going to be like I'm aiming for 1020 locations, so kind of like what we're developing the Steam Camps to, more, more locations. We're going to kick off a ch an incentive challenge to produce the world's first open source, 3D printed, professional grade cordless drill made from trash. Okay. So that's going to be big, a big challenge, and we're going to put a lot of money behind it. And where the rules are for complete collaboration, it's a completely collaborative thing, because if you notice, like a lot of contests, are where people are competing between teams and mm -hmm. it's like okay people let's collaborate what if all the teams actually work together so that's how we're going to set up the rules to get the, be the better faster stronger on on everything so that's going to be september and and the skill set you get for uh through the the camp the the summer will definitely get you prepared to collab to to be a participant in that contest and an incentive challenge mm -hmm. you'll, you'll have a definitely a head start and the other thing is we, we're recruiting people for instructors for Steam Camp. So uh, anyone who takes the three months of the summer of Extreme Design Shit. Build should be really capable to, to run those Steam Camps if you'd like to do that. But since you're working, uh, you, you may not have the time. But we well, are actually cre 
creating like smaller versions like weekend and four day versions of the nine day steam camp. So uh, if you like, you can start getting involved. So think about that. You're going to be running those in what city? Uh, it's France, south of France. In the south of France. Yeah, but since I'm not sure if I'm still going to be working afterwards in the same company. Yeah. So I may be able to, to get involved yeah. uh, in growing a local community in France. So do, yeah. do you have, uh, do you have, did you already see some people from France? Uh, there was one guy in, from, in... yeah, there's, uh, well, one guy participated remotely from France. Yeah, there's, I mean, the France has got all those, those circular economy guys, but the, the missing link for me a lot of times is they're not clear about the open source nature of it. A lot of people beat around the bush around it, like the peer production licenses, which are still proprietary. They're, they're, they're co-ops, but they're proprietary co-ops. They're not open to the outside. We like to work <laughs> openly, so you have to have an open license. And that's core to our work. So a lot of that stuff, I'm trying to push that those guys kind of learn about open source. Because <laughs> they're, they're all talking yeah. collaborative, but there, I think there's, there's a gap there on being both collaborative and open. So I'm finding that collaborative and open are very distinct things. And ideally you have both and we're striving for that. We're absolutely on that, both open and collaborative, but we have to pay attention to that and make, make sure the license is open source, Ashwa and OSI compliant. Without that, there's conflict. So you can uh, start the, the motion in France, because we don't have a specific collaborator in France right now. We have Belgium, we have Michel in Belgium. Uh, France is not, not really there yet, but you, you, after this event, you may be able to yeah. push forward the, the French, French direction. Sure, cool. Yeah. Excellent, so I love it. Uh, this is getting better by the minute. <laughs> and uh, if you got any questions, let me know. Yeah, uh, so shoot you a mail. You're, you're pretty early to sign on, that's, that's awesome. And we'll, uh, we'll get more people and We'll have a lot of fun in the summer. All right. Awesome. Well, talk to you soon then. Okay. Thank you. See you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.